Here I've got this quick number theory problem. So our goal is to find all primes p such that 2 times p to the sixth minus 234,705 is a prime number. Before I jump into some tools that might be useful for writing down a fairly short solution, let's look at a hint. And that is whenever you see a problem that has like a crazy large number that seems like it should be difficult to deal with, there's probably a trick which makes the solution very, very quick. And that's what we'll see. Okay, so now let's maybe see some of those hints. Okay, so the tools that we'll use, which I use a lot on this channel for these types of problems, are the tools of modular arithmetic. So let's first remember a definition. So we say that A is congruent to B mod N, if n divides b minus a. And this is equivalent to a and b having the same remainder when divided by n. So let's look at some examples. So 19 is congruent to 15 mod 4. That's because 19 minus 15 is equal to 4. Or 19 divided by 4 gives us a remainder of 3, and so does 15. Furthermore, 28 is congruent to 0 mod 7, because 28 itself is a multiple of 7. Or in other words, if you divide it by 7, you get a remainder of 0. And so along with this basic definition, we'll also use something called Fermat's theorem. And that says if p is prime and p does not divide a, then a to the p minus 1 is congruent to 1 mod p. So let's look at an example of that real quick. So let's say p is equal to 5 and a is equal to 3. I think we can all decide that 5 does not divide 3. Now let's look at 3 to the power of 5 minus 1. Well, that's 3 to the 4. You can calculate that to be 81, but notice that 81 is congruent to 1 mod 5. So there's an example of Fermat's little theorem in action. Okay, so now that we've got these kind of things recalled in the front of our minds, let's jump into our problem. Okay, now we want to look at the solution. And you probably saw via Fermat's little theorem that we want to reduce mod sum prime. We just have to figure out which prime we'd like to reduce modulo. And built into this problem is a huge hint, and that is this exponent of a 6, which is 1 less than the prime 7. So that tells us that we should probably work mod 7 and see what happens. Okay, so let's do that. So let's notice that if p is not equal to 7, then p to the 6 is congruent to 1 modulo 7. But that means that 2 times p to the 6 is congruent to 2 mod 7. Now, in the case when p is equal to 7, we'll have to work that out on its own. Next up, we'll look at the rest of this number. So in other words, we want to reduce 234,705 mod 7. And the best way to do that is just to divide with remainder. So 234,705. And let's see what we get dividing that with remainder. Okay, so after doing a lot of grade school math, we see that in the end we have a remainder of 2. But the fact that we have a remainder of 2 means that this number, 234,705, is indeed also congruent to 2 mod 7. So that means if you take the difference of these, so 2p to the 6 minus 234705, we get something which is congruent to 0 mod 7. But that's problematic because that means that 7 divides this number. So 2p to the 6 minus 234705. And like I've been saying, this is all in the case when p is equal to 7 or p is not equal to 7. Well, if 7 divides this number, then this splits into two cases. The first case is if it's not prime. And the second case is that this number itself is equal to 7. So that'll be 2p to the 6 minus 234705 equals 7. And the best way to check that is just with test cases. So if we split this off into the p equals 5 case and then the p equals 7 case, we'll see in the p equals 5 case, this thing is less than 0. And in the p equals 7 case, 
this is much bigger than seven. So that means that this is never equal to seven, which means this kind of object is not prime unless possibly if P is equal to seven. In that case, we'll have to look at on its own. So let's do that. We just got done showing that if P is not equal to seven, this object is not prime. Now we have to check what happens if P is equal to seven. So we've got two possibilities. This could be prime, and then we've got our solution, or maybe this is also not prime, and there is in fact no solution. Well, let's check. So if we take two times seven to the six minus two, three, four, seven, oh, five, I'll spare you the long calculation, but what you end up with is the number 593. Then we have to check if that is prime or not. And that may seem a little bit daunting, but we only have to check up to the largest prime, which is smaller than the square root of 593. So just to put that into perspective, all we need to check is which primes divide 593 when we're just looking at primes up Two, like I said, the largest prime, which is smaller than the square root of 593, and I think that's the number 19. So that means we only have to check the following primes. Two, three, five, seven, 11, 13, 17, and 19, which shouldn't be too difficult to do by hand. So I won't do that, but if you want to finish this off like really properly, you'd have to check all of those little cases. We do have some divisibility rules for some of them, but not all of them. And in the end, what you'll see is that this number is prime. So indeed, we have a solution and P equals seven is our only solution. And that's a good place to stop.